Welcome back. I'm joined by Eric Kaufman, and we're going through wokeism and woke ideology. And of course, a really important question is, are Canadians woke? And Eric, we're going to start right off with that question. Are Canadians woke? Uh, in a word, I'd say no. Um, by about two to one across a range of 50 questions that we administered, uh, Canadians actually were on the sort of anti-woke side on balance. Um, by a ratio of two to one. And that incidentally is almost a, an exact match with the British and American publics who give you an almost exact similar answer. You know, let's take a question, you know, is Canada a racist country? Canadians respond no, 70%, yes, 30% on that. That is a greater anti-woke response than we find in the US or Britain. Uh, that's just one example. I mean, should statues of Sir John A. Macdonald, which have largely been removed or covered up in, in Canada, should they be removed? Well, two to one, no. Uh, another example. Um, should, uh, you know, now to go in a more radical direction, should school children be separated by race into privileged and oppressed in class? 92 to eight opposed. So almost overwhelming opposition to that, which which has occasionally happened, right? So there's what I would say is that the Canadian public really isn't that, well, isn't very woke, is quite anti-woke. Similarly, on the trans uh, question as well, you know, if we take, uh, you know, should there be gender reassignment surgery for children under 16, four to one against. Um, and so really the, the Canadian institutions are very much operating independently of Canadian public opinion. Uh, and that's really, really comes out in the survey. Wow. Uh, when you say these things, I'm thinking about public policy that we have here in Canada. And we have seen some premiers like Premier of New Brunswick, Blaine Higgs, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith come out with, um, it's a spectrum, but come out with um, some kind of policies or suggestions that might, you know, curtail wokeness, if you will, in this case, gender ideology, especially as it respect, with respect to minors. But for the most part, I don't see that public policy reflects this research, this data you've just presented. Why is that? It really doesn't. And that's because the elite political culture uh, in parliament or in the established media uh, is much more on the woke side uh, than the public itself. And so therefore, the public's desires uh, don't actually get translated into policy, whereas woke activists get their desires translated into policy much more easily. Now, part of the issue here is that again, I mentioned this idea of being canceled. Uh, nobody wants to speak up against these policies. I mean, even Blaine Higgs divided his cabinet when he said something as uncontroversial, really, as saying that parents should be notified if their child is using a different pronoun in school, um, something that's overwhelmingly supported. And yet that was a stretch, even in New Brunswick under a conservative government. And so, yeah, I think what you have here is an elite political culture where the norms are quite different from those of the public. And it's really that disjuncture between the two, which also, by the way, offers a huge opportunity for conservative politicians who are willing to break that sort of norm at the elite level and really speak to the concerns of the public. Yeah, I, I too was sort of shocked. And I remember doing an interview at the time when Blaine Higgs made his policy announcement because I, I kept looking, where was this outrage coming from? I said, there must be something hidden here in the policy. I'm like, oh, it's just to notify parents if their child wants to use a different pronoun. Yeah. Sorry, this is what the big hoo-ha is all about. Right. And I was like, this is, I mean, I'm glad he made the policy. It definitely started a really big conversation. And strangely enough, that was a catalyst, but it wasn't a real big deal, but it became a big deal. And yes, I do believe um, in this case, maybe it's this case of the squeaky wheel gets the grease when uh, the woke activists are so loud and, and you know, kudos to them for advocating for their cause, uh, then they will be heard. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now, what about it, when we look at the demographics of Canadians? You said, for example, four to one uh, were opposed to gender reassignment surgery for those for minors. Does that right. is that across all age cohorts? Does it change as one ages through? Um, yeah, I mean, I think younger people are going to be more woke than their elders, although I would say that what, what you notice, that that difference is very pronounced within people who identify as left wing or who vote for the Liberals, NDP, uh, or Greens. So if you take young left wingers, they are considerably more woke than older left wingers in the population. And that's a trend we see in the U.S. and Britain as well. Um, so that is 
a, a, a trend that's interesting. Um, and to some extent, women are somewhat more woke than men, particularly younger women. Um, so there are a couple of these differences that are important. What's interesting, however, is that certainly if we compare French and English, there aren't great differences. And I expected there to be much bigger differences because public policy in Quebec is not as woke as in English Canada. But okay, I'm going to pause actually, you there because I'd like to talk yeah. about that right when we come back from the okay. break. Uh